Okay, hi everyone. I'm here with Sandra, who's the manager of West London Community College. Um, West London Community College has now been going for a few years, and this is our new college for adults on the more able end of the spectrum. So, Sandra, can you tell me a little bit about the type of referrals that we get and the difficulties that parents have? At the moment, we're getting a lot of referrals through from schools um, or transition social workers, prompted by the parents because they've heard about the facility. There's such a lack of provision in the area. And they just don't know where to look. They're asked, particularly for people that are about 19, to try and get the young people to continue in an educational capacity. That that isn't always the right facility, especially if somebody's coming from, say, a, an autism-specific school, and then they're going on to a, a quite a large college um, that's then got a generically LD special needs attachment to it it's still a big place, it's still a big campus, it's still very large and challenging for that individual. Um, some people that maybe haven't been fortunate enough to be in an autism specific environment through school, they have been at a generically LD school. Again, when we get those referrals, we, we're often faced with people that are displaying challenging behaviour because they've not been in an autism specific environment and the training hasn't been there for the staff. You know, they, they, they do do their best. We've been to schools and we've visited and they genuinely do care about the students, but they don't have the level of understanding that you need to work specifically with people with autism. Um, what about parents themselves? Do you find that they're quite sort of broken down because they're trying to find various different places for their sons or daughters? Oh, and gosh, yeah. What they've been through the mill and um, they're just like obviously anxious because they're worrying about, you know, what's going to happen to their sons and daughters when they get to 20, 30, 40. Well, even younger than that, we, we had a, uh, I had to call an emergency professionals meeting last week for one individual. The family live in a three-bedroomed three house. They've had a conversion downstairs for a bathroom, but still not great. They've got three children living at home, all with multiple disabilities. We're talking people that are having you know, grand seizures. Um, they, ha they have learning disability, quite severe. They have microcephaly and they also have autism, all living together. Mum is absolutely on her knees exhausted. Dad is physically abused by one of the children, who, one of the children in the house, he's a young man, he comes to our college. We haven't up until recently seen very much challenging behaviour from him at college, but now he's moving over into his college life. And obviously we try and support parents as much as we can, so Mum's been telling us about what's been going on at home, um, even last year we called an emergency meeting, nothing came of that, it's just got gradually worse, the family is going to crisis now. Two of the children go to college and uh, the, the young man comes to us only three days a week, that's the only funding she could get. She's so desperate for him to come here for a few more days to give the family respite. Uh, residential living would be ideal because the family would get a total break but they're a very close family. He loves his siblings, he loves his mum and dad. He's not ready at uh, 20 to move out into residential living yet. And also, he, he would just feel too much out of the loop with the family. So mum said, look, I, to the social worker, you know, the other two children, I can, I can you know, pretty much cope with them. Can't you take away the services that you give them and give him the money so that his service can be increased? She said, I would even do that. So desperate my heart, yeah, absolutely. Um, you came along to Act Now, which is one of our presentations with reference to the anxieties that parents have and adults have um, for disability living allowance, for work capability assessment. I was just wondering, um, you were talking about a young man here uh, that actually went for a work capability assessment. Could you elaborate a little bit on what happened when he went? Yeah, he, he went along <clears throat> and he'd, be, he'd been previously for appointments at the job centre for one a year or something and dad had always supported him. Um, on this occasion he, he, you know, he knew they were going to have to go along again. The young man is a selective mute, he was very very anxious, he knew that there would be pressure on him to speak in public and he, he, he can't do that. Um, I run a parent care support group here and dad had said at the parents care support group that he was going to go along on this occasion and not speak for his son. He was going to make it more difficult for, mm -hmm. for the staff member so that they could see you know um, the difficulties his son goes through and he he's such a nice man 
he said, and the, and the lady was really trying to get his son to speak, and he was just nodding or nodding or shaking his head, and that's as much as he was. And he, he broke down in the end, the, the, the dad, and, and said, look, you know, he's a selective mute, and he helped her out. But he did make sure that she recorded it properly. He felt that he proved his point. But, um, you know, that was his fifth visit, you know, and he had to go through that. Okay. All right, then. Well, thank you very much, Sandra, for sharing the information with us, and um, we'll hopefully have a tour of the college um, pretty soon to share with everyone.